Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So friends, before going any further, let's discuss what all things we have covered in our previous videos. So the first video was on the overview of the LGIP engines in which we have seen the nomenclature and the basics of dual fuel engines, uh, the supply system, the FBT and the main engine. And in the second video, we have covered a small part of supply system that is only the deck tank. So uh, this thing, if you want to see in detail, you can watch these two videos on my channel and then come back on to this third video to see further what's going to happen next. So friends, let's begin with this video in which we will cover the next part of supply system that is the fuel gas supply system skid. So if you remember our old uh, or the previous fuel oil, normal fuel oil uh, supply system in which there is a supply circuit plus a circulatory circuit. So if I have to cover, uh, I have to compare this with the old version or the normal fuel oil system, then this FGSS or fuel gas supply system skid basically represents the circulatory system of the normal fuel oil system. So let's see what all things are there in this FGSS skid. So friends, if you recall my previous video, in that I have uh, carried out the initial checks on these uh, LP pumps and then after setting up the line, I have started the LP pump. So LP pump was started and the uh, this uh, LPG or the propane fuel was in circulation in the deck tank. So LPG has already reached till this point over here. LPG is already reached. That is, it is waiting to enter the FGSS skid. But till now, the inlet valve to the FGSS skid is shut. So LPG is not uh, entered or has not entered yet into the FGSS skid. So first we will see the components of the LP, uh, FGSS kit. Then we will see uh, how we will start the FGSS kit. So let's uh, finally go on to the FGSS kit. Now friends, uh, let's see how the LPG flows into the FGSS kit when we are starting the skit for the first time and main engine is either stopped or it is running on the primary fuel. So uh, this is the inlet valve provided at the skid inlet. So when we open the skid inlet, the LPG enters into the uh, flow meter. And via flow meter, it passes through this LPG heater. So this heater is provided for two purposes. So first purpose is that uh, when we bunker the LPG into the, into the deck tank, so at that time, the temperature for the propane or the LPG will be at around uh, minus 40 degrees. So that temperature has to be uh, increased or to around 34 degrees for the system to be operational. So for that purpose, this LPG heater is provided to heat that uh, propane or LPG to at around 34 degrees Celsius. And the other purpose for heating the LPG is that uh, in this uh, LGIP engines or dual fuel engines, the system oil is used as a sealing fluid in the injectors. So small amount of uh, lube oil also enters the LPG system and the leftover LPG which is uh, returned back from the main engine to the skid will basically have a small amount of uh, sealing oil into it. So if the temperature is uh, very less uh, in the circulation lines then the oil will get freezed or the line will line and filters will get choked. So for that purpose to avoid all those situations the heater is provided so that we can heat the LPG to around 34 degrees uh, for the smooth flow of the uh, smooth flow of the LPG or the propane into this system. So now let's see after this heater the LPG is passed or enters the pump suction. The, these two HV pumps are provided. So these two pumps basically are VFT controlled. Uh, they basically uh, maintain, uh, develops a pressure of around 50 bars from 20 bars. So the discharge pressure for the LP pump will be around 20 bars. And uh, from 20 bars, these HP pumps 
boost up the pressure to around 50 bars and uh, the vfd con uh, these pumps are vfd controlled to maintain the maintain this pressure at various loads of the engine so main engine could be running at uh, different loads so for that purpose uh, this these pumps will increase or decrease their rpm so that uh, they could maintain the 50 bar pressure and uh, after uh, the after the pump or basically the pump discharge the lpg uh, temperature increases to at around 40 degrees so 40 to 45 degrees you can say so for uh, so to again cool it down to at around 34 degrees we have supply cooler so basically this cooler cools down the lpg to at around 34 degrees again after it is uh, discharged from the hp pump and uh, after the supply cooler the lpg passes through this hp filter and from filter it uh, basically waits over here so you can say the lpg will wait here till the time a command comes from the engine control system to open this uh, this uh, skid outlet valve so uh, when we are going to uh, change over the main engine on secondary fuel at that time after carrying out uh, various test uh, by the engine control system a command will come and that will open this valve so till that time the lpg is again recirculated back to the hv pump suction by this flow control valve so this flow control valve basically maintains a minimum flow of around 5 meter cube per hour into the system and uh, this valve basically uh, maintains or you can say the uh, quantity or the quantity of LPG uh, which is needed by the uh, main engine during operation at various loads. So this is what is all about when uh, main engine is running on primary fuel and it is uh, or, or it is either stopped and uh, we are starting FGSS kit for the first time. For the first time means the difference will be when we are starting this FGS skit again. So in that case, uh, there will be some level in this catch tank. But when we are starting uh, the FGS skit for the first time, then in that case, this tank will be empty. And there is an interlock provided, uh, which says that if uh, the LPG liquid in this tank is uh, below minimum level, then we won't be able to start this FGS skit. So for that, we have provided with an interlock bypass mode. So in that, we can bypass this uh, interlock and we can start the FGS system. And this interlock will be bypassed only for one hour. So after that, the system will again trip if the level in the cash tank doesn't reach to a specified value or a specified level. So uh, in the next slide, we'll see how the level in the cash tank increases. So, uh, level in this cash tank will not increase till the time we start the uh, uh, main engine or we change over the main engine from primary to secondary fuel because the only way it can enter is, uh, the only way the LPG can enter this cash tank is through the uh, leftover LPG from the main engine, uh, like uh, with this path. So, basically this cash tank is uh, will come into use when engine is either starting or it is stopping so in these two conditions this catch tank comes into use now let's see uh, how this catch tank gets filled up when we start the or when we change over the main engine so friends uh, when we uh, change over the main engine on secondary fuel or uh, when we try to start the main engine on secondary fuel then the engine control system will carry out various tests uh, to check whether the secondary fuel components are working uh, fine or not. Then after the tests are carried out or basically uh, uh, when tests which is carried out by the ECS are passed, then the ECS will give or engine control system will give a command to this skid outlet wall to get open and the LPG will be supplied to the main engine via this, LP, via this uh, supply wall train and uh, the L the leftover lpg will be returned back to the skid via this uh, return wall train 
so the left over lpg will not directly enter the skid first this uh, left over lpg will go to the catch tank through this line this wall will remain open and this wall will be closed at that time till the main, uh, main engine is fully changed over to lpg and it is running fine and if suppose uh, the level in this catch tank has increased above a uh, maximum level so in that case this wall this level control wall will open and this will maintain the level in the catch tank and uh, this level control wall will basically supply or uh, will uh, return back the uh, lpg which is coming from the main engine into the skid so to summarize this whole situation this wall which is directly uh, supplying the return lpg to the skid by the return cooler will remain closed and uh, the wall which is supplying lpg uh, coming out from the main engine to the catch tank will remain open till the time the main engine is completely change over to dual fuel and it is running fine and uh, during this condition if the level in the catch tank uh, reaches or goes above the maximum allow, uh, allowed level then this level control wall will open and it will redirect the uh, lpg or the returned lpg back to the fgss food uh, fgss kit by this return cooler so this is how the main engine is started and uh, the catch tank level is uh, reached now after uh, the full operation is stabilized then these two walls will get change over so basically what will happen this wall will be almost shut to maintain the uh, level in the catch tank and this wall will also get shut and this wall will open so now when engine is running on dual fuel then in that case the uh, return path will be like this so it will directly go to the return cooler and not to the catch tank and from return to the cooler cooler it will enter the uh, pump suction and uh, this uh, wall will be shut so this uh, catch tank will be fully isolated you can say when the main engine is running uh, so friends now let's see the stopping of main engine on secondary fuel or basically changing over of main engine from secondary fuel to primary fuel so there will be two cases the one case will be uh, where we are intentionally changing over the main engine from secondary fuel to primary fuel and other will be the case of emergency like we have some problem in the secondary secondary fuel system so then in that case the events or the sequence of event will be different totally different than what will happen in a normal changing over or normal stopping of the main engine so uh, in this video we'll just see the normal operation or basically normal stopping of the main engine and uh, the emergency things uh, emergency stopping that we will see in some other video now uh, let's see the stopping sequence so the first thing what will happen is that the engine control system will basically increase the primary fuel injection into the main engine and it will slowly reduce the secondary fuel injection and after some time the prime the main engine will start running on the primary fuel and secondary fuel will be completely stopped and uh, in that uh, after that this uh, ecs will stop or we will shut this uh, fgss skid outlet wall or basically uh, the inlet wall to the main engine and this will also change over this uh, these walls so the wall to the catch tank will be opened and the return wall which is going directly to the fgs fgs skid that will be shut so what will happen now is that uh, the lpg supply to the main engine has shut but still there will be a small amount of lpg which is already there in the pipe that will be left so for safety purpose we have to uh, remove that lpg back to the fgs skid and also we have to fill the, uh, the fill those lines or we uh, fill fill the fill the piping with the inert system or inert gas so that is basically nitrogen so to meet that requirement we have a nitrogen supply in the supply wall drain so nitrogen is supplied 
to the main engine piping uh, through this supply wall train at around 30 bars and this 30 bar nitrogen will basically push uh, push back the leftover lpg from the main engine via return wall train to this catch tank because this wall is already open and this is shut so the leftover lpg in the main engine will be uh, injected back to the catch tank now uh, during stopping or when the engine was running normally the catch tank level was normal and pressure was also normal but uh, during stopping uh, the mixture of lpg plus nitrogen will enter the catch tank so in that case the level as well as the pressure in the catch tank will increase so to maintain the uh, catch tank level and pressure two walls are provided one wall was this one so that i have already discussed that this will open and maintain the uh, uh, level in the catch tank this is level control wall and this is the pressure control wall that we'll see now the pressure in this tank is maintained at around 23 bars so when the mixture of lpg plus nitrogen enters this catch tank this wall will open and uh, this will drain the mixture of lpg and the uh, nitrogen to this purge tank so basically the lpg mixture and the uh, nitrogen mix nitrogen plus lpg mixture will be finally collected in the uh, purge tank so the purpose of uh, uh, purpose of this purge tank is that uh, like suppose if this purge tank is not there then we don't have any other option uh, to collect this mixture and uh, we have to directly uh, release this mixture into the atmosphere but there uh, can be scenarios in which the ship is in port or uh, it is in uh, in in the area where the uh, purging is not allowed so in that case if we purge then we will be fined with a huge amount so to avoid that this purge tank is provided so this lpg plus the nitrogen mixture will be collected over here and when uh, ship moves out at sea so at that time we can uh, remove the mixture back to the atmosphere by opening this pressure control wall so this is basically a pid wall that by changing the setting we can directly purge this uh, mixture back to the atmosphere or directly to the atmosphere through the vent uh, vent, um, vent mass so this is what uh, happens when we stop the main engine or change over the main engine from secondary to primary fuel So friends, uh, till now we have uh, discussed about the LPG circuit in the FGSS kit. There are other circuits also uh, that if I cover in this video, the video will become too long. But in this, I'll just we will just see what all circuits are there. Like uh, this cooler, this supply and return cooler plus this LPG heater. So there has to be some uh, cooling and heating medium. So the glycol circuit, basically glycol is used as a cooling and heating medium. And uh, the cooling and heating circuit we will see in next video or uh, in, in future videos. And the other uh, system which we will see is the nitrogen. Nitrogen system. So nitrogen is basically provided at two places in this FGSS kit. One place is this one as you can see which is providing nitrogen to the catch tank. So in the nitrogen generator nitrogen is produced, produced at around 300 bars and this nitrogen is uh, reduced to around 32 bars and it is provided to the catch tank and this pressure control wall basically opens when there is a decrease in pressure below 23 uh, bars so when there is uh, when uh, when the catch tank pressure goes below 23 this wall opens and supplies nitrogen to this um, catch tank and uh, one more place where the nitrogen is supplied is this one so this this is basically providing nitrogen to the hp pump seal support system so these two things we will cover in our next video so till then take care and have fun